Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Just verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. It shall not depart out of... In other words, it shall always be in your mouth. But you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. You shall prosper. You shall have success. You shall be wise. Is that okay? When shall you have this? When you have observed what God said. Okay, it seems like you missed that one. He says, you shall take this word, it shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may observe. Okay, so there's two things you've got to do. The word must not depart from your mouth, and you must, but you must meditate on it day and night. He says, and then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. This, this word shall not depart from your mouth. If I am in an airplane and I'm ready to depart to the United States of America and it says, this aircraft shall not depart, what does it mean? It's not, the it's not going anywhere. Now, I've checked it in different translations, and it says the same in all translations. This word shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may observe all that is written in it, so that you can make your way prosperous. So that you can deal wisely and so that you can have good success. In other words, the Bible says a fool speaks all that's in his heart. A wise man keeps his tongue. Proverbs. A fool will say all his heart. A wise man will keep his tongue. In other words, if I just speak, 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 speak. Everything just comes out, comes out, comes out. I did not meditate what's written in the word so that the time it departs my mouth, it must bring prosperity, it must bring wisdom, and it must bring success. If it does not, it means I'm a hurried speaker that makes me a fool. That means I just keep speaking, 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 speaking. I can say the word as much as I can say trash. So, same mouth that speaks word, speaks nonsense. The same mouth that speaks positive confessions, speaks negative confessions. So, we got to take the word, meditate it. It's not allowed to depart if you haven't observed what it's there for. So, Romans chapter 10 tells us, from verse 8, bless you, from verse 8 right to verse 17. He says, this word of faith that we preach is in your mouth. This word of faith. So he takes the word of the law and he makes it the word of faith. Because in Deuteronomy 30 he says, this law or commandment that I give you this day is not difficult. It's in your mouth and in your heart to speak it. Okay, so it's blessing or cursing. It's life or death. It's good or evil. 
It's in your heart and in your mouth to speak it. So if you don't meditate on it, you'll speak anything. The one minute you'll say, well, bless you, brother, you're good. The next minute you say, you're a creep, man. In other words, I did not meditate. I did not observe what is written in the book. That's why I don't deal wisely with situations. But if I meditate... Before it depart out of my mouth. I will deal wisely. I will prosper. And I will have good success. So this word of faith that we preach. It's in our mouth and in our heart. That if we believe with our hearts. And confess with our mouth. That Jesus Christ is Lord, that God raised him from the dead. We shall be saved. Hmm? Then he goes on to say, but how shall they believe if they don't hear? How shall they hear if there's no preacher? Then he goes on and he talks again about believing. And then he comes in verse 17, he says, so faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. I mean, we heard this message for the last 35 years. But have we heard that the word to believe is in our mouths and in our hearts? So we must meditate on it before it departs. So what we hear from the word, even if it's read, spoken, or written word. If we get the word in us, it builds faith. If I do meditate on it, observe what is written, and then when I speak, there must be results of prosperity, wisdom, and success. So it says, believe, 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 a couple of times there in Romans chapter 10. So Hebrews chapter 11, we know Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. So there's stuff that everybody wants to see, but you don't see it. So faith is that evidence to get that stuff in. So now Ephesians come and says, we are saved through faith. Or by faith through grace. Through grace by faith. All right? But it's not of ourselves, it's a gift of God. So faith is a gift. But how then do I get my faith to operate? And this is a revelation that I had, I think, 2002 or three, and I preached a series on it. I said, God's gift to me is faith. My gift back to God is belief. And I still think that's a great revelation. God just gave it to me in preaching one night. I think it was 2002 or something. Faith is God's gift to me. My gift back to God is belief. So I get the spoken word, the written word. I get the word. But this word shall not depart out of your mouth. Joshua, don't speak. Don't let this word depart. But you must first meditate until you observe all that is written. Then you shall make your way prosperous. Then you shall deal wisely. And then you shall have great success. Wow. I can preach the whole hour. Just keep on repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. Okay. So Hebrews 11.1. Bless you guys. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Okay? Now listen to verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible. It's impossible. Without faith, it's impossible to believe God. For he that go to God must believe that he is. Let's stop. Full stop. Now, everybody in this house and everybody watching by TV, John 1, 12 says, 11 says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, 
To them gave He the power to be called the sons of God. As many as believed. How many in this house believe that? Believe Jesus came? Believe God sent His own Son to die? You believe the blood washes you from all sin and unrighteousness? Believe Jesus is the Son of God? Come on, let's work together. We believe. Full stop. Then we are believers. Now listen. He that goes to God must believe that He is. So if we believe that He is, not was, not shall be, but He is. In other words, I am. That is another word for is. So I can't say I is. But if I believe He is, it means I believe He is, I am. Right. He that goes to God must believe that he is. Do you believe that? Yes. Now the rest of the scripture. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now please, saints of God, holy believers, listen. If I believe the first portion, he is, that's why I'm saved. Why don't we get the second portion? He is a rewarder of them that seek Him. In other words, if I go to God, I say, Father, I believe He's God the Father. Why don't I then believe that He's going to reward me for what I ask? Why is it that Christians can pray for ages and never get a result? If I take my prayer list, how many of the articles discussed has been answered? Is it not answered because something is wrong in my life? It can't be because we're living in grace. And Peter said, when the lame man at the gate called Beautiful walked, don't look on us that though by our own works of righteousness or good works this man is here. But no, it's because we believe. It's faith in his name that made this man whole. It's believing on him that you crucified, that God raised. It's not our work. So, uh, so he got an answer when he spoke. So we can't. Mm. So if we go through our list, that's not answered yet. That's not answered yet. That's not answered. So I say, Lord, what is it? He said, it's we believe that God is, but we struggle to believe that He's a rewarder. We believe He is, but we go and we don't break through that He can. Reward. In other words, I must be specific in what I ask. Otherwise, how will I know he rewarded that thing that I asked for? And if I ask for that specific thing, do I believe that he's going to reward me? If I believe he is, why don't I believe the rest? I mean, what's more difficult to believe? Here I come. Full of nicotine and alcohol and other leaves. Here I come into a church. I cry. I say, Jesus, forgive me. I haven't seen him. I haven't felt him. He didn't appear. But yet I say, Jesus, cleanse me, wash me, I receive you as my Savior. I stand up and I believe my past is gone, I'm a new creation, I'm saved, I'm a child. Nobody will convince me different. Now what bigger miracle do you need than to believe that stuff? You've never seen him, you've never heard his audible voice. He never appeared to you. You never had a dream about him. But yet you believe that you are saved. You are born again. You're a child of God. Why don't you then believe the simple things like answer prayers? Yeah. Hmm? 
And it all comes to that one in Joshua. So he's a rewarder. To who? To believers. In the 1946 revival, I said it a couple of times here. The song that they sang at the end of the meetings when they started the healing lines. Oral Roberts, Jack Coe, A.A. Allen, William Branham. Would the sister come to the organ tonight? As we're just going to sing, only believe. And then went, only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. And only believe. And you see the people coming. The people coming. And sinners coming. And crutches are flying. And cancers are disappearing. And only believe. Only believe. If I believe that he saved me from my sinful life. Can I not believe the rest? And I said, Lord, I need to give an answer to the church. We need to get breakthroughs. He says, don't let the word depart. Meditate on what is written in it. So that you can observe what it's there for. So that the minute you speak it, it's going to bring success, prosperity, and wisdom out of you. Hearing, meditating, speaking. You see, meditating is sometimes a slow process. If you translate it into Afrikaans, it says meditate. <laughs> if you're English, you will never understand. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> Let's go to Mark 5. In other words, if he's a rewarder, how will you know he rewarded you if you were not specific? If you just pray to pray. I must pray, so I pray, 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 pray. So if I know what is written, I can take that word and be specific and say, God, you said it. You said this word cannot return void unto you. Now I've got a promise here, God, concerning my situation. Lord, I meditate on it. I see what you did for Joshua. I see the walls of Jericho falling. I see what you did for Elisha. I saw what you did for Elijah. I saw what you did for Ruth. I saw what you did for Obed-Edom. I see it, Lord. I meditated. If you did it for them, you're going to do it for me. Now I've meditated. Now I'm going to speak it forth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I speak this thing into my life. My God shall supply all my needs. According. You see, but we speak, oh, my God shall supply all my needs. Then I look at how other people's needs are supplied and I get jealous. Instead of getting specific about my need and meditate till I observe what is in it. And then I speak it and then you shall make your way prosperous. This can just maybe the word. That you need it to change your life forever. So simple, yet so profound. Verse 22, and behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. Now look at the man's situation. My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee. Do you are here? Come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Hmm? Come, lay your hands. I know you know the story, you know where I'm going, you can preach it to me, but let me preach it to you. Come, lay your hands, she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. 
Imagine the crowd is just building up. Where are you going? Man, they're going to Jairus' house. This little boy, man, he's got a daughter. You know, she's nearly dead. But, you know, he said to Jesus, if lay hands on him, she will live. Well, come, join us. As they go, crowd get bigger and bigger. Crowd strongly. We're going to see Jairus' daughter healed. I mean, he's the ruler of the synagogue. Everybody knows him. Huh? He's like the mayor of the town. I don't know where our mayor is nowadays. But in any case, verse 25. And a certain woman. Now here's a different story. An insert. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better. It's like that today too. But rather grew worse. It was too quick. When she listened, when she had heard, how shall they believe if they do not hear? How shall they hear if there is no preacher? But when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. Now look at the Amplified Bible, verse 28. But she kept saying, if I only touch his garment, I shall be restored to health. Verse 29. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body she was healed. Okay. Okay. Insert. She heard. Hmm. She kept on saying. And straight with it. And Jesus, verse 30, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Jesus had nothing to do with the miracle. When you go to God, believe He is and the rewarder of them that seek Him. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Joshua, don't let this book depart from your mouth. Meditate on it. Think deeply on it day and night. Till you observe what is written therein. Then when you speak, I put my words in there. Then you shall handle with good success. You shall make your way prosperous. And you shall deal wisely in situations and circumstances. So this woman heard. There's a man in town called Jesus. Must be the Messiah. Because he's from Nazareth as the prophet said. This is the miracle worker. Tell me more. He touched people and they are healed. People touch him and they are Tell me more. Then she meditated. Then she kept on saying, if I can just touch his clothes. If I can just touch his clothes. The more she heard it, the more it fell in her heart. The more it fell in her heart, the more it came out of her mouth. The more it came out of her mouth, the more she heard it, the more she heard it, the more she spoke it, the more it fell into her heart, the more she meditated till it becomes such a saturated woman with if I can touch him, if, I, if others touch him, if others, and bam. Woman, your faith has made you whole. You got what you believed for. Cool. Do you think it's cool? Not for Jairus. It may sound all right, but remember the procession is on the way to go to Jairus' house. The, 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 the purpose of the procession is to go heal Jairus' daughter. And now everything stops and Jesus starts talking to this little woman. Peter starts argumenting. Everybody is pushing. How do you come? You know, Jesus, I felt power going out. Jairus. (laughs) 
How do you know that? By reading the rest. Hmm? While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Your daughter is dead. Why troubles thou the master any further? Hey, look here. Why trouble the master any longer? The situation is now out of control. Hey, why do you want to keep on going on with what you are doing? The thing is now so bad, it can't be saved. I mean, they already took the furniture. They already said you got seven days to live. It's not worthwhile trying to press in now. It's too late. Why troublest thou the master any longer? Can I share something with you? I am. The woman heard. Then she must have meditated. And then she kept saying. Huh? If I can touch him. Okay. Women, your faith has made you whole. Awesome stuff, isn't it? Why troublest thou? Here comes another revelation. Why troublest thou the master any longer? Your little girl is dead. Why troublest thou the master any longer? Your little girl is dead. Listen to John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believed in God. Now, believe also in me. Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.